Hello everyone! On this week in 1996, Crash Bandicoot was released and put Naughty Dog on the map as well as the PlayStation 1 and uh, and this was quite a game to start a lot of people's experiences with the PlayStation 1. Uh, one of the first uh, 3D platformers that I played, I think Spyro is already up there as well. Uh, and I think Super Mario 64 is a little bit after that. But let me just double check our options real quick. Just see what we got here for... Okay, there's our 1996 options. Okay, so let's start. Actually, okay, yeah. So yeah, I beat this in, on, in the... The Insane Collection, Insane Trilogy. I don't know if I have a save on this or not. Okay, I do. No, that's Crash 2. Okay. Alright, that's fine. Let's just start here at the very beginning. Because it's, uh, it's well worth it. To start out here. Yeah, so this was not the first Naughty Dog game for those that might not necessarily know the whole uh, the whole history of of that team. Uh, they were making sort of Genesis, uh, Sega CD, 32X, I think, games on that sort of platform. Uh, and I don't think any of them really struck a chord with anybody. There was Way of the Warrior, which was a metal, or not, a Mortal Kombat clone. And as you might uh, be surprised to learn, is it was terrible. You can go find footage of that on on YouTube. I don't know if it was actually released. It might not have actually been released. What have we got? I'm not 100% sure about that, but I've seen people play it, and it is real bad. It's it's a FMV. They definitely did like the FMV, but like like it was in their apartment, so they had friends and whatnot come over and just record some stuff for them, and that was sort of how that whole thing came about. So it definitely looks cheap and very much. What have I got? Oh, we got three of the masks, so now we got invincibility for a little while. All right. There we go. Yeah. So playing this after playing the the insane trilogy. It's not really all that different. Oh, well, we lost uh, one of the masks. All right. Yeah, this obviously it looks worse, but it still plays pretty much the same. Yeah, there's still hit this whole weird mechanic in the first game, which doesn't really come back in the same way. It still wants you to get all the boxes, but it doesn't sit here and just drop it on you. Yeah, and sort of a weird sign of how this is a, you know, ancient. I like that the that his model kind of clips through parts of the mountain as you're rotating it. Like, they couldn't get it completely clear of that. But, yeah, you use uh, square and circle buttons on that to rotate that. Not any sort of, like, shoulder buttons. Obviously, this was released before the DualShock, the... The second analog controllers. What have I got? Let that one go. I can definitely feel a little bit. I know that people have had problems control wise with the Insane Trilogy. I mean, I beat this game on there and never beat it here. So I at least was able to stick with this a lot more than the. 
originals. Okay, we get that. You get three of those, and you unlock like a bonus uh, stage later on in the level. A lot of like classic mechanics that kind of come from Donkey Kong. I would say if, if there was a an inspiration, it would be Donkey Kong. I very much just having like these different collectibles. He's having these different collectibles throughout levels that open up different sort of bonus stuff. Okay, we got the classic. There we go. I rarely ever mess that stuff up. Would have been poetic if I did that on this video, but hey. Up to nine level, nine lives. One more one ups. And it does a nice job of. Okay, we got that. Oh, it just loads you right in. Yeah, so in the Insane Trilogy, there's like a pad right there to load into this. So that's uh, a difference that I noticed right away. Yeah, and despite it being 2D here, you can actually move in 3D still. So you could just walk off the front or the back of these little areas, these little pathways, which is... Scary in some of these levels. Yeah, there's his weird girlfriend. Yeah, let's save in a new slot. Yeah, that's one of the weird things about PS1 is that you can sort of over save over your other saves, which it's probably useful when you run out of space and have to decide what to what to sacrifice and whatnot. But I definitely recall, I think it was either this game that I overwrote another game save or I overwrote this save with another game back in the day. Which also I imagine like a lot of people ha uh, we had the these sort of multi-page memory cards I think I had one that was like 20 pages so you could save sort of have just paid virtual pages for many of the games that you had uh, need for that and eventually it messed up and I lost some saves out of that I want to say like Final Fantasy and some stuff like that. Well, let's see how this goes. This is one of the tougher stages, at least early on. There's the harder. The whole thing with this game what have I got? is that some of the tough stages they revisit them later on. So while this might be a tough level, there's going to be an even tougher one later on. And uh, if you go over to the Smash Pad. A YouTube channel you can see me play the harder version of this level in the insane trilogy and I almost wipe out which is pretty crazy you gotta hit that to get it to turn and it goes back to normal a little bit later I already got a checkpoint. The other thing is checkpoints can be brutally far apart. Okay, this one goes up. Yeah, there's no crawl mechanic like there is in uh, Crash 2 and Warped. Did I? Okay, I got that. Oh. Yeah, this guy. Oh, I just. It's alright. Goodbye, monkey. What have I got? There we go. Yeah, there's a, a weird crawling mechanic. It's. 
not really all that useful. But it does... Boom, there you go. But it does let you more easily dodge obstacles like that. Okay, another life. Alright, get past that. Those flaming pits are... can be hard to deal with as far as judging when it's safe and when it's not when you are trying to be very, very precise in your platforming. Obviously that's not a hard challenge right there. Okay. I thought I got hit there for a second, but hey. Watch out. I want to get one out. Yeah, as you've seen, there's no story for what she is, but in the Insane Trilogy, they have sort of a backstory that Crash Bandicoot is experimented on by Insane. He, escape, he escapes, uh, and this female Bandicoot... Let's update the save game. Okay, that's pretty cool. It automatically updates that save. I was seeing the Insane Trilogy, it auto-saves. And you can even turn that off for manually decide when to save what depending on how you actually want to do it yourself it's pretty open to that yeah I guess if I had all of the that was weird because there wasn't any boxes or anything like that. Okay. The other cool thing is that they have Coco the sister. Okay, this is one of the first running towards the screen levels. Yeah, no analog stick support in this, though. Is that just a matter of me turning on analog mode? Nope, okay. That's not a big deal. Okay, so this is going to be coming right at us. Let's just keep running. It's one of the iconic things about this game. Are these levels. Especially when you get... Okay. We're doing lives. Okay, we've got 18. We're, we're more than good. We're going to get this. And yeah, let's check out how much time we got here. Probably won't play a ton of this. There we go. Did it again. That's just me being, uh, just having brain farts when these when these pits come up. Yeah, the Insane Trilogy is fantastic. The updated visuals look great. It controls pretty well. I can definitely feel the thing that people are talking about as far as the the physics of the jumping. Which I think is more just because there are physics here. Oh, through the tree trunk. I want to say the boulder breaks the the boxes for you. And this one, it doesn't. So that might be some of the stuff that they've done to just make it a little bit more fair in a sense. 
But I don't know if you are able to... Yeah, I see it jumps over. There we go. Uh, I, lo I love that animation of him freaking out as he's running, running at the screen. All right, on to. I think we'll play one more level. I think we'll have time for that. Yeah, this is the thing it didn't play at the end of the last level. Might be because there was an alternate exit for like the true ending or whatever it is. Because I want to say as you beat each of the levels. I don't know if there's any... ...specific thing. Yeah, so there are the three worlds. Obviously, like, even having the levels laid out like this is very much a Donkey Kong Country thing. As well as Yoshi's Island. Yoshi's Island also did that sort of thing as well. Some of the great music here. As well as some cool water tech here that makes this river stuff look really nice. Yeah, so the main here to watch out for the fish, but you can also knock them away. Let's get this guy. I do like actually just landing on this and letting it rotate the model around. I always thought it was a pretty cool thing, and I imagine it's probably also like a tech showcase thing. Just like, hey, look at our model, just rotate around. Because there are platforms later on that do this exact same thing. What the heck was that? They hit a fish? Another life. Yeah, you can also send the the fruit away. You don't really want to, obviously, because you can get lives with that stuff with every hundred. Yeah, okay, there's a fish. I missed the fish. Oh, I was trying to get cute there. Same thing there. There we go. Let's go serious run. Let's beat this level. Okay, now I'm just screwing around for nothing. Come on, come on, come on. I did the exact same thing. Okay. I am losing it. So let's beat this level before I completely lose it. Go. Yeah, so besides the colors, you can also tell by just the orientation of their uh, mouth flaps. Yeah, there's a secret path down there. Well, at least I got the checkpoint there. 
boom, yeah. Alright, number three, and we can go for this extra section. Which in the Insane Trilogy, you can die here, just fine with, the, with no penalties. It also tells you how many boxes you get in the Insane co Collection. Ah, crap. Does it start you at the checkpoint, or right... Okay. That was your one chance, I guess. Though I did get all of those crates. Okay. Yeah. Oh, boss fight. We're gonna do this boss fight and then that'll be it. Oh, uh, there's some crazy levels later on. There's one that's so hard that even, what was it, Jason Rubin, I think, it made it. Let's call it like, the high road or something like that. Here, all I gotta do is jump on his head. Real simple boss fight. Oh, uh, what? There we go. Two hits? Or did it? Was there a third hit that I missed? Oh well. Uh, so yeah, that is Crash Bandicoot. It released on September 9th. 1996, a year after the PlayStation launched, and was one of the the core titles that helped elevate the PlayStation from a potential bad, you know, CD-based multimedia console that followed the, the failures of the 3DO, the Sega CD, the Philips CDI, into becoming a legit console in the realm of the Sega Saturn and Nintendo 64, obviously was way better than both of those consoles, sold way better, and had mostly better games than those other two consoles. Crash Bandicoot was one of those, Final Fantasy VII, Spiral of the Dragon, Gran Turismo, Metal Gear Solid, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, tons of titles, tons of great titles, both 3D and 2D, and, you know, Old genres, new genres, and lots of great, great stuff on the PlayStation. Crash Bandicoot was one of those. And Naughty Dog eventually got picked up by Sony. At this point, they were these games were technically published by Universal. They own Naughty Dog and Insomniac, I believe. They had deals with those two companies to do Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. Sony was also partnering in there somewhere, and I think they sold. They had the rights to the the IPs. Crash and Spyro, and sort of gave those up to Universal, who eventually became Vivendi, who eventually became Activision, and is now Activision Blizzard, where that stuff is all owned. Uh, Sony uh, got uh, better relationships with uh, Insomniac and Naughty Dog, eventually bought Naughty Dog when Jack and Daxter was being made. Insomniac just stayed independent. But, yeah, they were sort of saved from being the Crash Bandicoot and the Spire of the Dragon teams forever. Which is great. But hey, it's been 21 years since this game came out, and it's still a lot of fun to play. It's still, you know, one of those great platformers that gets, uh, gets a bad rap just because it was an early PS1 game. So it doesn't look as good as like either the sequels or you know some of the other games that came out around that time but it holds a special place in many many people's hearts and the insane trilogy did a great job of capturing that stuff and giving you a fun way to either experience it for the first time or come back into it and yeah this game is one of those games for me 
So thanks you, thanks to all of you for checking this out, and we'll see you guys again next week as we check another game out uh, that celebrates its anniversary. Have a good one.